Hey guys, welcome back to the Artsy Autism Mom Chronicles. Today's Artsy Autism Mom Chronicles is going to be a Black History Month spotlight on my birthday twin, Rosa Parks. But before we get into it, here's the intro, and I'll see you guys on the other side. Rosa Parks, born Rosa Louise McCauley, was born in Tuskegee, Alabama on February 4, 1913. She moved with her parents, James and Leona McCauley, to Pine Level, Alabama at age two to reside with Leona's parents. Her brother, Sylvester, was born in 1915, and shortly after that, her parents separated. Rosa's mother was a teacher, and the family valued education. Rosa moved to Montgomery, Alabama at age 11 and eventually attended high school there, a laboratory school at the Alabama State Teachers College for Negroes. She left at 16, early in 11th grade, because she needed to care for her dying grandmother, and shortly thereafter, her chronically ill mother in 1932, at 19, she married Raymond Parks, a self-educated man, 10 years her senior, who worked as a barber and was a longtime member of the National Association for the Advancement of Color People, NAACP. He supported Rosa in her efforts to earn her high school diploma, which she ultimately did the following year. Raymond and Rosa who worked as a seamstress, became respected members of Montgomery's large African-American community, coexisting with whites in a city governed by Jim Crow laws, however, was fraught with daily frustrations. Black people could only attend certain inferior schools, could only drink from specific water fountains, and could borrow books only from the Black Library, among other restrictions. Although Raymond had previously discouraged her out of fear for her safety, in December 1943, Rosa joined the Montgomery chapter of the NAACP and became chapter secretary. She worked closely with chapter president Edgar Daniels, E.D. Nixon. Nixon was a railroad partner known in the city as an advocate for black people who wanted to register to vote and also as president of the local branch of the Brothers of the Sleeping Cars Porter Union. On Thursday, December 1st, 1955, the 42-year-old Rosa Parks was commuting home from a long day of work at the Montgomery Fair Department Store by bus. Black residents of Montgomery often avoided municipal buses if possible because they found the Negro in the back policy so demeaning. Nonetheless, 70% or more riders on a typical day were Black, and on this day, Rosa Parks was among them. At one point on the route, a white man had no place to sit because all seats in the designated white section were taken. So the driver told riders in the four seats of the first row of the colored section to stand in effect, adding another new row for the white section. The three others obeyed, Parks did not. People always said that I didn't give up my seat because I was tired, wrote Parks in her autobiography. 
but that isn't true. I was not tired physically. No, the only tired I was tired of was tired of giving in. Eventually, two police officers approached the stopped bus, assessed the situation, and placed Parks in custody. This ultimately became the beginning of the Montgomery bus boycott. Although Parks used her one phone call to contact her husband, word of her arrest had quickly spread and Edie Nixon was there when Parks was released on bail later that evening. Nixon had hoped for years to find a courageous black person of unquestionable honesty and integrity to become the plaintiff in a case that might become the test of the validity of segregation laws. Sitting in Parks' home, Nixon convinced Parks and her husband and mother that Parks was that plaintiff. Another idea arose as well. The black population of Montgomery would boycott buses on the day of Parks' trial. Monday, December 5th, by midnight, 35,000 flyers were being mimographed to be sent home with black school children informing their parents of the planned boycott. On November 13, 1956, the Supreme Court ruled that bus segregation was unconstitutional. The boycott ended on December 20, 1956, a day after the court's written order arrived in Montgomery. Parks had lost her job and experienced harassment all year, became known as the mother of the civil rights movement. Facing continued harassment and threats in the wake of the boycott, Parks, along with her husband and mother, eventually decided to move to Detroit, where Parks' brother resided. Parks became an administrative aide in the Detroit office of Congressman John Cornier, Jr. in 1965, a post she held until her retirement in 1988. In the years following her retirement, she traveled to lend her support to civil rights events and causes and wrote an autobiography, Rosa Parks, My Story. In 1999, Parks was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal, the highest honor the United States bestows on civilians. When she died at age 92 in October 24, 2005, she became the first woman in the nation's history to lie in honor at the United States Capitol. That does it for this Black History Spotlight on Rosa Parks. Please follow me on all my other social media. I'll see you guys the next time. Until then, I'm out of here. Peace!